you got to see during action? Uh, yeah, first thing we, uh, you know, we uh, last Saturday we were we were rained out. We were supposed to have it at the stadium, so uh, you know, coming over in this environment, and I know there's not cowbells and a full house, but particularly for the young guys to have them in Davis Wade, it's a little bit of a different feel, and that's something that uh, you know, we did at Penn State and Coach Franklin. Uh, Kind of believed in that. And we brought it here, so uh, there were some wide eyes and some young guys where the game was moving pretty fast. But you know, as a head coach and uh, a football program, anytime you have an inter, inter squad scrimmage, uh, what you want to see is is a great level, great level of effort and increased uh, understanding of the scheme and improved execution. Uh, and you want you want both sides of the ball to be competitive. You want it to be competitive, and you want to see the special teams do well. And I thought. You know, for the most part, the kids kids had great urgency. You know, they uh, knew what they were doing for the most part. We'll get those things cleaned up. But I, I thought it was a heck of a competitive practice. After a couple of weeks of spring fall practice, now, I mean, what are your thoughts about the quarterback competition? Yeah, we uh, you know, kind of had an idea heading into the the scrimmage where we were. You know, based on you know uh, all the information that was available. You know, statistics. You know, uh, completion percentage, touchdown interception ratio, explosive plays, and all those things. And uh, you know, you kind of have your gut feel, you know, watching it. But uh, you know, we'll grade it tonight. We'll talk about it tomorrow, and then kind of make a plan moving forward from there. I thought, I thought, I thought both of them, once again, are po taking positive steps forward. I think they're pushing each other and making each other better. And I also think, uh, you know, the young guys, particularly Garrett, you know, are, are really taking taking nice strides. He, he had another nice scrimmage today. Do you anticipate having a starter name like going into game week? Um, that you would share, or is that a deal that it may be day of game before you even make a decision on that? Kind of have an idea. I'll let you all know at some point this week to, what, what that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> did y'all did y'all take it as an opportunity as a coaching staff to get up in the booth with the headsets and all that stuff? We didn't. There? We didn't do that today. So, so traditionally for the first two scrimmages, we don't we don't do the headsets. But Wednesday we have kind of a dress rehearsal. We'll come in, get on buses, do the dog walk, bring them into the stadium, do our. Uh, you know, pre-game routine in terms of stretch and warm-up and things like that. Then we'll play uh, a first half, kind of a thud scrimmage with headsets and you know all the all the game day kind of assignments and things like that. So uh, you know we'll, we'll do that dry run on Wednesday. From a health standpoint, where you where are you guys at right now? A couple weeks out. And talking to you know Thomas and his staff. When no one's out for an extended period of time, so I think normal practice 15 or 16. I think it's a normal bumps and bruises at camp, but. No one that's uh, out for the word indefinitely. Indefinitely or for an extended period of time. I should know that English major. Indefinitely. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. So Kendall should be ready for the open. Yes. Yeah. I mean, knock on wood. I mean, upper body. I mean, he's been he's been doing a bunch of stuff and kind of progressing them into team drills. But, uh, you know, he's uh, and we're anticipating him being ready. So, but, so you never know. Will he back in practice full time? Sir? Will he, will he back in practice full time? Yeah. Will, will he's he still got a lower body. You know, we held him out today and we're you know, cautiously optimistic for. Uh, that when we start ULL prep, that he'll be ready to go. How different is a quarterback competition for you this year compared to last year when you had a returning starter in the mix, and, and this year you don't? I think the difference is there's not an incumbent. You know, where where Nick had played a lot of football and you know won a lot of big games, and you know kind of had a a young guy behind him that, that, that you were looking to evaluate and develop. And now it's you know, I'll say both untested guys. You know, one guy's played in the system for one year, and the other one for going on his fourth year. So when, when it's a, I mean, every depth charts are written in pencil. I mean, every spot is open, but this is one where KT would have had to do something out of the ordinary last year to uh, to unseat Nick, and now you know, it's a true open decision battle. Penalties were a problem in some of the games last year, even in the bowl game. But yeah. are you seeing more discipline out of them during these scrimmages and stuff? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, after the Kentucky debacle, I think we got it cleaned up pretty nice. Uh, you know, I think actually statistically we were in the middle, maybe the upper upper half of the of the conference in penalties, and then you know the the, the bowl game kind of you know lost track of that a little bit, and you know had some. To me, there's going to be you know holds, there's going to be pass interference, there's going to be things like that, but it's the, the pre snap offsides, and, you know the the uh, post snap deals. But yeah, I, I think year two when you talk about you know discipline as you're mentioning. Uh, I think that ties into culture. I think we're seeing great leadership and chemistry, and, and I would hope discipline on and off the field is part of that. Any update on Corliss or Kareem? The update is there's no update, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. But uh, you know, not for lack of effort. We're trying, and as soon as we know, we'll let you all know. I know you generally like to have a clean divide between the ones and the twos at wide receiver, like yeah. a well-defined 
rotation there? How close are you to that, do you think? To a rotation? Or to like well-defined ones and twos well, they're, they're, in well, they're making it hard. I mean, when you look at the, which is a good thing, when you look at the, uh, at the Z position, you've got Osiris and uh, Javante. Javante, you made that correction. So if you are, it's a long A straight line across it. On the soft uh, and they're really pushing each other, and, and he's a guy coming in from Juco that has made a lot of nice plays in camp. Uh, you know, Dedrick, uh, Zuber in, in Austin, and then, uh, you know, Gidry and Cam, you know, th those guys are all pushing each other. And I, I don't know that necessarily, you know, I don't know if it'll define itself up until the game week, you know what I mean? But, but to me, it's a, it's a good sign when you have guys that are pushing each other and there's true competition there. Is WAP at X? Is WAP is an X, yes. Coach, what is uh, WAP's availability right now? What's his status with the team? Yeah, um, you know, WAP right now uh, is back home in New Orleans uh, with his mom dealing with some personal issues. And, uh, you know, we've kind of talked to him on a daily basis. We've given him a time frame where, you know, we're going to kind of address it and, you know, see where he's at mentally. And I think that's sometimes, you know, year 21 and being a, being a husband and a father of young kids, that I think we lose sight of the emotional aspect of it and that component. And you get caught up in playing time, you get caught up in depth charts, and you realize, you know, the kids have, you know, problems that are outside the white lines, and we're doing everything we can to support them. And, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with football. But, uh, you know, those are things where I have a young man sitting across from me, and I'd want him treated like someone would treat my own son. And, you know, we're giving him the support, and you know, we want him to be here. And you know, the decision he makes, we're gonna we're gonna stand behind him. This, this time last year, coach, uh, we found out Nick Fitzgerald wasn't gonna be available for the opener. Is, is there anybody at this point that's a non-medical situation that'll be unavailable? Uh, I mean, we'll get that information to you. So on uh, it's game day or the day before, anyone who's gonna you know miss the game, we'll provide you guys with that list. So it's easier to do at that point. I know you're just walking off the field from the scrimmage, but any guys stand out? Any notables? Uh, we spread the ball around pretty good. You know, Kyle had a limited work, but he had a couple of nice runs. We started it off backed up at the minus one. You know, offense needed the first down, defense needed to hold him. And Kyle and cracked, it, cracked a big one there, and then we put it at the 35, didn't move the field. Uh, 35 going in, uh, we did tight red zone, and then we did overtime. So I, I think the good thing offensively is that. Uh, you know, we spread it around a bunch, bunch of different guys made plays. Uh, can't think of who all the touchdowns were. Uh, Martin Emerson had, had the one interception, the one turnover. He made a nice play on the sideline towards the tail end of it. But uh, you know, it's uh, that'd be something more I gotta go, go through with a fine tooth comb. But those are the things that kind of stood out initially. You mentioned Emerson there. Is this a point in practice where you have an idea of who might take the four games in red shirt and who's going to be a bigger contributor? Funny you say that. Uh, st uh, staff meeting this morning. Uh, we have. I think I've talked about this before. We have a chart that's red, green, and yellow, where we kind of take everyone who is a, a true freshman or is a returning player who hasn't utilized their red shirt. And on a game-by-game -game basis, green means they're going to definitely play. Or we're going to utilize utilize them and not red shirt. Yellow means we're not sure, and red means they're going to definitely red shirt. So not tomorrow, but the, uh, the Sunday following, we'll kind of assess that. Are the players notified that as you go, or are they find yeah, out? Yeah, they are. Okay. They are. Yep. Coach, we, include, we include him in that process. We've talked about Javante Payton several times, but every practice we come out here, he kind of flashes in practice. What do you guys see when he goes to full team drills, when he's got a defender in his face? He's got, he's got very good speed. Uh, he's got unique body control. I know we kind of compared him to a guy I was at when I was at Pitt, and that was a long time ago, kind of sinewy, you know, kind of real quick start and stop, change of direction. You know, he's, he's got, you know, good natural hands, but uh, – you know, he's the kind of guy at either the Z position or he could probably play the slot too that, that, that combines good athleticism with good change of direction, and natural natural ball catching skills. With Kareem. Kind Matt, of taller than you think too. With uh, Kareem not here yet, who's kind of you see making the third team back you know, behind Lee, Lee Witherspoon's been taking them reps. And then you got uh, Alec, Rob Rivers, and then we got another young man walk on, Connor Higgins, taking them reps. But right now it's uh, Kyle and Nick and Lee. And Lee, Lee he had a touchdown tonight, right? He had a couple long runs. He scored a touchdown tonight. Yeah. How's he without the ball? How's he without the ball? Yeah. Just talking about pass pro? Yeah. Any situations? Not he, running? Is it, uh, no. I mean, he's, he, he's improving. And the first thing is knowing who to block. And then the second thing is we got Brian Cole or Errol Thompson ripping off the edge to <laughs> kind of stand in there and uh, you know, block him. And those are two. So we'll take the first step, know who to, and then after that. But the thing is, he has a, the will to is better than the skill to sometimes. And if he can't, and it, you know, he. Uh, He'll stick his face in there and block. We just gotta we gotta get reps and teach him technique.
Some of the players have mentioned that Chauncey Rivers has really kind of stepped up into a leadership role. What are you seeing from him? Exactly what you said. You know, last year, you know, it's kind of hard not to get caught in shadows of, of uh, Montez and, uh, and uh, Gary. You know, they cast a pretty pretty big shadow, but now with he, Kobe, uh, Marquise, and uh, Fletcher kind of taking that role. And, and, and when you're in your last year of eligibility, you kind of have that senior year urgency. So everything that he's doing, it's, it's uh, characteristic of a guy who knows what he needs to do in his last year personally and for the team. Sort of off topic of training camp, but yeah. uh, speaking about recruiting, I was looking at some numbers specifically, uh, how much schools are spending on recruiting. <laughs> Mississippi State is you know, toward the, the bottom of the SEC and even Power Five, but yeah. is there a situation in which you think that those numbers could go up? And, and if they did, you know, what would that do for the program? Uh, yeah. we. Uh, you know, certainly, I don't know that we'll ever have the, the resources of an Alabama or an LSU or Texas A&M, uh, and I think that's part of our, uh, you know, ability to I don't say do more with less, but I, I think you, you look at the last few years, you know, the room we're standing in now, you know, new players locker room here in in, in uh, Seal, you know, new recruit lounge, new position meeting rooms, you know, new graphics going up around the building. I think we're doing as good as we can at pushing the envelope. Uh, but I think it ties back to what we spoke about last time, that we've got to be really good in the evaluation process and find the type of kids who being at Mississippi State is important too. So, you know, certainly we'd love to have those kind of budgets and all the bells and whistles and gadgets. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, the administrators are doing a good job you know, trying to get us those things. And you know, ultimately we got to, you know, play the, play the hand we're dealt.